DNA, one of the greatest evidences for evolution, right? Or does it indicate an intelligent creator? Let's find out. Hint, it's not the latter. If simple water molecules that form ice crystals exhibit magnificent structure, consider the design ingenuity behind large, complex molecules, such as DNA. Faulty analogy there, but I'll let that one slide. The program code and design of such an incredible system indicates a supremely intelligent designer. So basically what you're saying here is just because DNA is complex, there must have been an intelligent designer. There are two points I want to make about this. First, DNA is not that complex. It's a really simple system, to be honest. It only composes of a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate, and a base. We only have four bases in DNA. And it's the combination that determines the primary structure of the created protein. How in any way is this complex? Look, I would argue that DNA is pretty standard. There's nothing too difficult about it in terms of its ability to code proteins. But we need to define some terms here. What exactly do you mean by complex? Complexity by itself means nothing. You can only have something to be complex in relativity to something else. So straight off the bat here, you've made a faulty argument. Also, not to mention that there are lots of problems with DNA and transcription in general. How could this possibly be due to intelligent design? The evidence to me that just cries out that there's a god is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. Books of information read by a language system? Look, anything that stores quote unquote information has to be able to be read and interpreted one way or another. Without the ability to interpret it, the thing is no longer an information storage system. Therefore, the definition of something being able to store information is largely dependent on the existence of any ability to read it. So in summary of this one section, Ken Ham, you're just adding unnecessary information in order to make it sound amazing as if God created it, but no. Scientists know today that language as a code only come from an intelligence and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. No, when did scientists ever agree that information can only come from an intelligence? The word information is really not clearly defined here, Ken. Also, you're making that fallacy again. Just because we haven't seen something being created or we haven't seen something happen does not mean it didn't happen. I don't know how many times I have to repeat it to you creationists. Moving on. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out in the beginning, God created the universe. No, 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 no. No, it doesn't say anything about there being an intelligent designer. And no, it doesn't point to Genesis. Why is it your God? Why, 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 why? Bitch. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it, thousands of different kinds. <sighs> you haven't learned about differentiation, have you? All cells are totipotent in the beginning, meaning they have the potential to become anything. This property is due to epigenetics not yet disabling the unneeded DNA. Here's the thing, all cells have the same genetic code. It's the ability to turn certain DNA on and off that determines what the cell becomes. A neuron in a skin cell, for example, have the same DNA but expresses different parts. That's what defines the cell. It's not that cells somehow just know what to become like you said. Epigenetic markers determine it. And each one of them is so complex, nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works. There we go again. What do you mean by complex? You can only say something is complex in relativity to something else. 
And what do you mean by beyond our comprehension? We understand cells quite well. Well, may, may, maybe not you, but us scientists, we sure do. And encoded is the instruction manual. It's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of 100 trillion cells. Great. Every high schooler who has at least gotten a decent education knows this. All you're doing here is that you're trying to explain something that is really common knowledge and putting it in a way that makes it sound super amazing. Oh man, I'm convinced. Praise Lord Jesus. Furthermore, DNA is a three-dimensional molecule that is self-replicating. Great, yeah, I think everybody knows this. Let's move on. Each molecule is able to make an identical copy quickly and efficiently. Quickly, yeah, okay, but efficiently, no. Let me get this clear. Okay, so DNA has two ends. One is the 5 prime end and one is the 3 prime end. The 5 and 3 here refer to the carbon number on the deoxyribose sugar. On the 5 prime end, we have a 5 carbon sticking out attached to a phosphate group. The 3 prime end lacks a phosphate group. It's important to know that the two strands of the DNA move in opposite directions. So, for example, if one strand of DNA moves from 5 to 3, the other strand moves from 3 to 5 in the same direction. Kind of basic biology knowledge here, but it's really important. Anyway, DNA and RNA polymerase only builds the new strand in the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. Recall that since the strands move in opposite directions, the polymerase only thus can read the original DNA in the 3 to 5 direction. This is very inefficient, if anything. See, helicase unlocks the DNA in fork bubbles. We must be able to replicate the DNA in one direction for both strands. Since polymerases only build in the 5 to 3 direction, how is this possible? This is where the terms leading and lagging strands come in. The leading strand is the strand in which the polymerase can easily build in one straight path from the 5 to the 3 prime direction without any stops. Now, since the lagging strand is in the opposite direction, it gets a little tricky. I won't get to the whole process in detail, just know that it's more complicated than what I'm describing here. Basically, we need to first put an RNA primer in front of the direction we want to build. Then, we will have the DNA polymerase read backwards until we reach the starting point. After, we remove the RNA primer and restart the process. Essentially, what we are doing here is that we are putting a few sections ahead, then reading backwards, then putting a new section ahead, then reading backwards again. Now that you have a basic idea of how it works, please tell me how in any way is this efficient. You claimed that DNA can replicate very efficiently, so how is this efficient? If an intelligent designer really created the universe, please tell me why he couldn't have made an enzyme that built in the 3 to 5 direction. The Lord has even programmed DNA to detect and correct replication errors. These sophisticated capabilities far exceed man's means. Okay, so we're talking about proofreading enzymes now. How could this possibly be God's creation? Think about it. Firstly, these proofreading enzymes are not 100% accurate. They will miss replication errors, and this happens more often than you think. Also, if God created this system, why allow mutations to happen at all? Why make mutations, then put in proofreading enzymes that aren't even 100% accurate? This, if anything, shows that there isn't an intelligent designer. There are many examples in creation of, of things that demonstrate the biblical God. Uh, one would be in our very DNA. Our DNA has information in it. <sighs> this is the same thing as the beginning of the video. Skip! Yet even the DNA molecule is simple compared to cells. All life consists of cells, and each cell functions as a miniature city. When we consider that a human body consists of trillions of cells working together as one unit, we should be in humble awe of our Creator's intimate care and perfect wisdom. So basically your entire video is, oh look at this, it looks amazing, therefore God. Well that's not a proper argument buddy, and plus you still have failed to identify why it's your God. <laughs> man, you guys, you, you guys make it too easy. I could do this YouTube stuff all day man, bring it on! Uh, outro, outro where are you? Outro? Get back here you piece of shit! <laughs>